afternoon, everyone, and welcome to Live at 4. If you're a numbers person, today's kind of special. It is 2-22-22. There it is. Isn't it's that a cool? Palindrome, is that what it's called? Yeah, that is really neat. Good day for a wedding. <laughs> Play the lottery? Yeah, exactly. Have a nice storm? Yeah, I hope everybody got to and from safely and the kids enjoyed their day off school today. And there's a huge ice storm 100 years ago yes. on 1-22-22. To, to the day. To the day. Yeah, isn't that something? So, yeah, more on that coming up. If that's good or bad, it <laughs> might not be good. Being cautious is the key today, though, with slick roads and sidewalks and a cold night ahead. We'll see how slippery things will be tonight and for tomorrow's commute. Nothing to see here. Aaron Rodgers reveals very little about his future in Green Bay today. So what are we to make of his late night Instagram posts? And strong sanctions. President Biden hopes squeezing Putin in the pocketbook will ease tensions in Eastern Europe. But first, let's take a look outside. That's some ice that has fallen. That's the pretty view of the ice. Right. Hopefully it's not too thick to take down power lines. Mm -hmm. Slick and cold tonight. Julian's in the backyard and it's snowing now. Yeah, just some light flurries out here on our weather patio, but that's one thing that you did mention that is pretty good so far, is that throughout the much of our events, we haven't seen many reports of power outages, at least throughout much of the day, but we do have that winter weather advisory still in effect for us all in southern Wisconsin until 6 p.m., then that's set to expire. However, for northern Illinois, is until about 7 p.m. Now, as we take a look over what we're going to be seeing, we do have an alert day, not just for today's. That's set to expire later into this evening. We have another alert day in the forecast for us for Thursday afternoon into Thursday night for occasional snow to be accumulating two to four inches to be expected for us here in southern Wisconsin. But here's a look at the radar. Now that that system has pretty much moved itself out, we're now just looking at some light flurries to be sticking around for us, especially into Dane County. But just outside into the east, much of that freezing rain, as we had mentioned earlier today, is now pretty much cleared out for us as we're now just going to be looking at some snow as we get into the later part of tonight. Current conditions right now here in Madison. It's 19 degrees. It feels like feels like it's seven degrees for us, and we are dealing with some light snow. So once again, just take real good caution if you have to leave the house tonight, as we are looking for those commutes to continue to be on the icier side. Very slick, very treacherous, and we're not going to be looking at much improvements at all as we go into tonight because of the colder temperatures. Now here's a look at our traffic as we take a look around. Fish Hatchery has some of the slow spots as of right now, but west and eastbound on the belt line, not too bad as we're going into the rest of our commute. But over towards the interstates we're still looking pretty good some spots are onto the slicker side as we are moving throughout much of to the evening here's a look at what it may take from getting to point a to point b a little bit slower than usual but that's expected with this winter weather we'll have much more of what else to expect coming up in a few moments until then let's toss it back to you guys in the studio all right julian thank you so much we have thankfully seen very few crashes on roads in south central wisconsin today but elsewhere in the midwest images like this a crash on I-35 south of Minneapolis shut down the freeway this morning. Five semi-trucks and five cars ended up in this mess. Crews were able to reopen I-35 around 2 o'clock this afternoon. Let's take a live look at the road condition map of the area. Here you can see a mix of ice-covered roads in red, slippery stretches in purple, and good winter driving conditions in the minority there in green. So if you do have to travel, make sure you be careful. Madison's in the green on that. That looks good. And here's a look at the belt line in Whitney Way. Conditions are moving right along. The road looks wet, but uh, not snow covered or slippery. So that's good news. Yeah, that's good news. Hope keep every, it slow. Hope everyone gets home safely tonight. The anticipation built all morning today. Aaron Rodgers appeared ready to make a big announcement on the Pat McAfee show. Instead, Rodgers shut down those rumors early in his appearance, saying there will be no news today. Rodgers spoke a lot. Uh, he spoke about a lot during his 40-minute segment at noon today. He not so subtly pushed for the Packers to place the franchise tag on star receiver Devontae Adams and apologized to his friends and supporters for the scrapnel that he said they took during the COVID controversy. But what then should we make of his late-night Instagram post that was filled with sentimental messages for Packers teammates and coaches? I don't think about that before I, I post something like that. And I think unless you've gone through certain experiences um, and had, you know, uh, frustration and, and, and been near the bottom and then get near the top and understand the, uh, the beauty in life, and uh, I think that's, 
then you might say things about that. That's a cryptic message. I mean, there's nothing cryptic about gratitude. Roger says he just finished a 12-day cleanse to help himself recenter, and he came out of that process with a sense of gratitude. Today, Rogers re-upped his stance that a decision is coming sooner than later. He said his relationship with the Packers is night and day different from last offseason in a good way. Stay tuned, everybody. Well, trying to, uh, Russian President Putin is trying to put his, his forces where it hurts most, through financial means. President Biden announced strong sanctions against Russia today, noting that the U.S. will rely on allies such as Japan to further squeeze Russia. The sanctions target Russian financial institutions and elite Russian families. Germany also announced that it stopped certification of a major natural gas pipeline between them and Russia. President Biden also said he would move American military assets that are in Europe closer to Ukraine, but said that was a defensive move. We'll have more on this coming up a little later when we're joined by an expert on Russia and Ukraine, Professor Yoshiko Herrera from UW-Madison. Well, who should have the ultimate say over what your children, what your child learns and what they can and cannot do in public schools? It's up for debate in the state assembly today. The education related bills give us a look at a key part of Republican midterm strategies nationwide as well. Our Naomi Coles is at the Capitol tonight to explain. Naomi. Republicans say this is part of a push to give control back to parents, perhaps best seen in one bill that would allow parents to opt out of school mask mandates, or another bill that sets a, quote, parental bill of rights. Now, that bill would allow parents to sue schools if they are somehow prevented from setting their child's religion or pronouns, plus the ability to sue if they can't get information about their child's education. I spoke with an educational organization about the bills, and the executive director says a lot of this stuff is already in place. His concerns are with wording. We see a lot of ambiguity in the language um, uh, of those bills um, that I think have some unforeseeable um, consequences. Um, I foresee causing a lot of litigation because a lot of terms are not very well defined. Other bills would expand charter schools in Wisconsin and stop University of Wisconsin and technical schools from teaching lessons that promote race or race stereotyping. At 6 o'clock, how this is part of a national push in the Republican Party platform, plus what educational organizations say they feel like they've been left without a voice in the process. We'll see you at 6. Naomi live from the Capitol. Thank you. From limiting who can donate to help run elections to tightening who's really indefinitely confined, Wisconsin Senate Republicans pushed to had election-related bills today, but none of them have a chance of becoming law. The Senate debated the measures when their floor session started a little after 11 a.m. 14 of the 15 bills had to do with election rules, but Governor Evers said he'll veto them, and Republicans don't have enough votes to override that veto. That makes much of what's done in the Senate today talking points for races that you'll vote on in November. The Senate also intended to take up a plan to build a youth facility in Milwaukee that would help close Lincoln Hill's youth prison in northern Wisconsin, but Assembly Speaker Robin Voss said his caucus likely would not support that. The man accused of causing a crash that killed a 65-year-old woman in Madison last month will need a new attorney. Marcus Longino appeared briefly in Dane County Court this morning. He faces six felonies from the hit-and-run crash on Milwaukee Street on January 29th. Barbara Olson was severely injured and died two days later. Longino ran from the scene, armed himself with a golf club and knife before surrendering to police. He was supposed to hear evidence the state has against him today, but his attorney asked to withdraw. A judge scheduled the hearing to next month. Longino is being held on $150,000 cash bail. Ahmad Arbery's family raised their arms in victory today. A Georgia jury all uh, convicted all three of the white men that had already been convicted of murdering Ahmad Arbery and found them guilty of hate crimes. The jury of eight white people, three black people, and one Hispanic person found the defendants targeted Arbery because of the color of his skin. Tomorrow marks two years since Arbery's murder.
I knew Ahmad's hands was in this from the very beginning. Amen. 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 The way Ahmad left here, mm -hmm. I knew that we would get victory on, mm -hmm. on the state level and in the federal level. Mm -hmm. 20 witnesses testified, some claiming they heard the McMichaels make racist statements. Text messages and social media posts with the N-word were also introduced to establish a history of racist views. The defendants tried to strike a plea deal, but the judge rejected it after Arbery's family opposed. The U.S. Women's National Soccer Team has reached a landmark settlement with the U.S. Soccer Federation to resolve its years-long fight for equal pay. No confetti this time, but the U.S. Women's National Soccer Team just scored one of its biggest victories ever. The team and the U.S. Soccer Federation have reached a $24 million settlement stemming from the equal play discrimination lawsuit the players filed in 2019 following the team's fourth World Cup victory. It is a huge win for us, for women's sports, for women in general, um, and it's a moment that we can all celebrate right now. The settlement includes back pay and equal pay with the men's team going forward, including World Cup bonuses. The two sides had previously agreed on improving working conditions. The team says the settlement helps repair its relationship with the U.S. Soccer Federation and credits its new president, Cindy Parlo Cohn, a former player who took over in 2020. We told you earlier about the president's sanctions against Russia, but will they be enough to avoid war? When we come back, we'll talk with an expert on Eastern Europe from UW-Madison about what lies ahead for Russia, Ukraine, and the U.S. Stay with us. Hello, I'm Roman Ryan of Ryan Funeral Homes. As a locally owned and operated funeral home, it's important to know that not all funeral homes are the same. Some other Madison area funeral homes are actually owned by corporations based outside of the United States. A corporately owned funeral home is focused on the bottom line, making services more costly. We have served local families for more than 80 years, and our priority is investing in the community and your family. In your time of need, Ryan Funeral Homes are here for you. Entresto is the number one heart failure brand prescribed by cardiologists and has helped over one million people. It was proven superior at helping people stay alive and out of the hospital. Don't take Entresto if pregnant. It can cause harm or death to an unborn baby. Don't take Entresto with an ACE inhibitor or aliskiran, or if you've had angioedema with an ACE or ARB. The most serious side effects are angioedema, low blood pressure, kidney problems, or high blood potassium. Ask your doctor about Entresto. Stretch your dollar with 11% off everything at Menards. Save on over 300 kitchen and bath faucets from Moen. Moen faucets give you a lifetime of beauty, reliability, and innovative features. Moen products are built to last in all the latest styles and finishes to match your home's decor. Save big and get 11% off our great selection of Moen bath and shower faucets. Get 11% off everything now at Menards. Save big. What do a 20 ounce Coca Cola and a Quick Trip take home meal have in common? You know, besides that, they're both delicious. They earn you chances to win a brand new Chevy Tahoe in our Coca Cola Scratch Game. They play the Scratch Game in your Quick Rewards app, and you can win a Chevy Tahoe or other great prizes. Play for free daily in your Quick Rewards app, or purchase any Quick Trip take home meal, 20 ounce Coca Cola, or Smart Water to receive even more chances to play and win. Play the Coca Cola Scratch Game today, and you can eat, drink, and scratch your way behind the wheel of a new Chevy Tahoe. Over these past months, we've all experienced changes and a great deal of reflection. But here's a change you can truly be excited about. Sonobello, America's number one cosmetic surgery specialist, permanently removes the fat from your stomach, hips and thighs, and back. I walked past mirrors. I didn't want to see any of that. I can't even tell you how excited I am about Sonobello and what they've done for me. I'm just living my best life now because I'm being the best that I can be. Sonobello's board-certified surgeons use micro-laser technology to safely target and remove your diet-resistant fat cells permanently. Schedule your free, no-obligation consultation. Plus, get $250 off instantly. You deserve to do something for you. Call 1-888-512-1753 or go to sonobello.com now. 
Well, the Internal Revenue Service has an alternative for the facial recognition program used to verify a taxpayer's identification. ID.me, the IRS's facial recognition vendor, has drawn criticism from civil liberties groups that say the program could harm the privacy of its users. In a statement, the IRS says people can now do a live virtual interview with agents without the use of biometric data. For those who still use the first program, IRS officials say biometric data will be deleted once a taxpayer's account is created. The U.S. Supreme Court today said that it will not take up former President Trump's case to block the release of White House documents sought by the Democrat-led congressional panel investigating the January 6th attack on the Capitol. The high court previously rejected former President Trump's emergency request to block the National Archives from turning over the materials as the court considered whether to take up the case. Today's order did not explain why the court was not taking the case. The order means the lower court decisions approving the release of the documents will stand. Stocks closed at their lowest level so far this year. The Dow Industrials lost another 482 points, ending the day at 33,596. The NASDAQ was off 166 points. The S&P 500 gave up 44. Well, the first round of international sanctions response has been swift and severe, and Russian President Vladimir Putin said he would send what he calls a peacekeeping troops into Ukraine. The Biden administration called that explanation nonsense and is accusing the Kremlin of creating a pretext for war. Natalie Brand has the latest from the White House. This is the beginning of a Russian invasion of Ukraine. President Biden laid out swift and severe sanctions after Russian President Vladimir Putin recognized two regions of Ukraine as independent. We've cut off Russia's government from Western financing. Russia will pay an even steeper price if it continues its aggression, including additional sanctions. The European Union is also moving forward with initial economic sanctions. And in a significant move, Germany announced it will halt the $11 billion Nord Stream 2 pipeline that would have moved natural gas from Russia to Germany. Russia has announced it will pull its diplomatic staff out of Ukraine as unidentified military vehicles continue to move in. Every indication uh, is that uh, Russia continues to plan for a full-scale attack on uh, Ukraine. To further bolster NATO's eastern flank, President Biden says he's authorized the movement of additional U.S. forces and equipment to Baltic allies. Mr. Putin can still avoid a full-blown tragic war of choice. Speaking in South Carolina, Senator Lindsey Graham said he and other lawmakers are working on their own legislation to give more assistance to Ukraine and possibly create a multi-agency task force to target Russian oligarchs. It's now time for that crowd to lose their yachts, lose their luxury apartments, and to pay a price. Lawmakers also warned that the effects of Russia's actions will be felt here at home with higher prices at the gas pump and potentially the grocery store. Natalie Brandt, CBS News, the White House. Well, to get more perspective on the situation, we have invited Professor Yushika Herrera back with us today. Welcome back. She's a professor of comparative okay. politics and international relations at UW-Madison. Welcome back again. Hi, Yushiko. Good to see you. Hi, thanks. Why would Russia invade Ukraine? Yeah, this is still the big question. Um, there were many off-ramps last week in the, la in the last couple of months um, to avoid this, but um, the situation changed dramatically last week um, when it became clear that they were going to do some kind of action in the east, starting with the recognition of um, independence of two regions of Ukraine. Um, it's still a big question, uh, but if you listen to Putin's speech, as I did yesterday, um, there is a kind of paranoid fear of NATO. I think that's a big part of it. The other is just a total disrespect for Ukrainian sovereignty. Um, he you know, essentially argued in his speech that NATO was planning an attack via Ukraine on Russia and that that had to be stopped. So um, I think there's quite a bit of uh, a fear, unfounded fear, um, and just a, a lack of connection with reality, unfortunately, on, well, on Putin's part. Well, how wide, widespread do you think this conflict could get? Are, are we looking at the possibility of war in Europe? Well, as things unfolded over, over the weekend and yesterday, 
um, you know, there's a hopeful scenario that Russia currently controls about one third of these two regions, which they they claimed as independent states yesterday. So the hopeful scenario might have been, and perhaps still is, is that they send they have and they have moved troops in, but so far they are in the Russian controlled areas of those two regions. So to some extent, that would be a bit of the status quo in the sense that they wouldn't be going farther than they already control and that wouldn't entail new fighting. Um, but the first the first issue would be if they cross the line of control into the remainder of Luhansk and Donetsk regions, that's going to entail actual fighting. And then moving further into Ukraine or possibly from the north, from Belarus into Kiev would, would also expand the, the war. I don't I don't think most people see this as expanding beyond Ukraine, and most people don't think NATO troops would actually engage with Russian troops, um, but rather that it would be confined to a Russia-Ukraine um, conflict. So the, the threat for the wider Europe, um, for wider areas of Europe is still relatively low. However, today, NATO troops were sent um, as sort of reinforcements into the Baltic states and other NATO countries just, just to be on the safe side. You think the sanctions that President Biden announced today will be effective? Um, they are a signal of possibly something to come. I think the biggest news in sanctions was Germany cutting off support for opening up Nord Stream 2, which is the, the new big gas pipeline. Um, but I think as a first start, today's and yesterday's sanctions are not are not not that um, significant, but it's possible that that's a signal of of more to come. Europe has already started sanctioning individuals. Um, the UK has sanctioned some individuals. Um, some banks have been sanctioned. So this could just well, President Biden said this is the first trench, and um, I don't think in itself it's that that. Um, significant just yet, but it, it could become so. The eyes of the world will keep a close eye on what's going on over there. Thanks for being with us today. Yoshiko, great to see you. I'm sure we'll have you back very soon. Thanks so much for your perspective. You're welcome. Thank you. There's more at four. Wait until you hear a story of a fight for survival and a dramatic rescue in the Pacific Ocean. That's coming up after Julian's certified most accurate forecast. That's when Live at Four continues. Stay with us. Do you suffer with pain, numbness, and tingling in the hands or feet? Commonly diagnosed as peripheral neuropathy? Are you taking drugs such as Lyrica or Gabapentin that have serious side effects and often do not relieve your symptoms? Your doctor has told you, you may just have to live with the pain. Peripheral neuropathy is a result of damage to the nerves, often causing burning, weakness, pain, numbness, tingling, and the most debilitating balance problems. Our facility uses multiple therapies therapeutic methods to help give you relief from neuropathy symptoms with no injections and no drugs. You may start seeing relief after only a few sessions. To determine if your neuropathy symptoms can be relieved, we will do a consultation to evaluate the extent of your condition. Call us today to schedule your neuropathy consultation to find out if you're a candidate for our therapy. Call today. Important healthcare announcement. If people tell you your TV is too loud or if listening in some environments has become difficult, we are requesting your participation in a special program called the 30 Day Challenge. Hearing Life Hearing Centers are seeking people with hearing difficulties to evaluate a new digital mini hearing aid now being released. To take part in this event, you must call. Please get a pencil and write down the number below. All people with hearing aids or hearing difficulties are wanted to take part in the 30-day challenge evaluating a new high-tech device that sits discreetly behind your ear. This hearing aid is Bluetooth enabled and is rechargeable. All hearing assessments are performed at no charge for those taking part in the challenge. Participants will try these hearing aids for 30 days. Call the number below and take the Hearing Life 30-day challenge. From working out to catching up, and of course, game night, your home is the groundwork for all of life's awesome moments. This is Tom Coyle. My family and I say thank you. 
We're proud to have been a part of this community for 77 years. And during our 77th anniversary event, carpet installation is just $77. Coil Carpet One Floor and Home. Beautiful, made affordable. Locally owned and operated since 1945. Save on your fave at the Century House. Right now, get $200 off stressless signature base recliners, classic base recliners with power, and new stressless cross base recliners. Or get a free accessory with purchase. It's time for stressless. Shop the Century House, 3420 University Avenue in Madison. Take a look at this. Fate is definitely looking out for this man. Wow. Let's take <laughs> another look. As he walks up to his house in Kentucky. He answers the phone and goes up the stairs. As he opens the door, an avalanche of ice and snow suddenly showers down from the roof, oh, crashing man. onto his front porch. It's time for this guy to buy some lottery tickets. Boy, timing is everything, <laughs> isn't it? I think you had trouble with the snow today. Wow. Nothing like that. Well, when life gives you lemons, you make lemonade. And when it gives you limes, make a margarita. <laughs> it's a perfect <laughs> saying for today because it is National Margarita Day. Known as the most common tequila-based drink served in the U.S., no one knows for sure who first created it, but the myths on its origins go back as far as 1938. Margaritas definitely received a boost in popularity with the release of Jimmy Buffett's 1977 hit song, Margaritaville. We took a margarita making class you on our did. last cruise. I was just going to say that. <laughs> yeah, we could all use one today. <laughs> so. I'll, bring, I'll bring the blender in next time. Mm -hmm. We could all use a little refresher today, Julian. Definitely. I am a sucker for a margarita. That'll be something for later on this evening. <laughs> but we are having to talk about something which is coming after today because we do have another alert day in our forecast, folks. We'll give you the details coming up when we're back at in the moment. We love our new apartment. Great kitchen, open floor plan. But there's not much privacy. <laughs> what happened to your wall? At least Geico makes bundling our renters and car insurance easy. Does save us a ton. Hmm. What's on this chicken? Paprika. <laughs> Paprika! <laughs> I made it at home. That's my catchphrase. For bundling made easy, go to geico.com. Allergy sufferers. Bedtime means it's time to take Zizol. Zizol relieves allergies while you sleep, so you wake refreshed. Plus, it works faster than Claritin, and on first dose, provides the same relief as Zyrtec in a pill nearly half the size. Be wise all. Take Zizol at night. You're a hard worker. Provide for your family. Do good things in the community. Help out your neighbors. You've been there for so many others. Now, we're here for you. Your local Wisconsin energy and emergency assistance providers are working together to keep you safely in your home and your heat and power on. Apply now for a hand up. No matter what's going on outside, we all want to be warm and cozy inside, especially this winter. We're U.S. Insulation, and we fix cold homes. When you have inferior insulation, it doesn't matter how much you crank up your furnace. Your expensive warm air still leaks out of your walls and attic. When we inject our premium foam into your walls, it's like wrapping a coat around your entire home. And just wait until you see how much money that saves you. So stop freezing and start saving. U.S.A. Insulation. Here's the newest spin on Wisconsin Lottery Scratch Games. It's X times the money. A new family of games with prices from $1 to $20. The bigger the ticket, the bigger the multiplier and top prize. All the way up to $200,000. Instant Scratch Games from the Wisconsin Lottery. Odds are you'll like them. No matter what you do, who you are, or how much money you earn, when it comes to doing taxes, don't go it alone. Jackson Hewitt Tax Pros will make certain you don't miss out on a single deduction. Get the biggest refund you deserve at Jackson Hewitt. News 3 Now First Worn Weather is brought to you by Lazy Boy Home Furnishings and Decor. 
Discover a shopping and design experience as comfortable as the furniture. Lazy Boy Home Furnishings and Decor. Schedule your free design consultation today. Welcome back. Now we're going to get right into things. We do have a winter weather advisory in effect for all of southern Wisconsin until 6 p.m. this evening for us. And for our friends into northern Illinois, it will be until about 7 p.m. for that winter weather advisory. Even though the strength of it has pretty much moved itself out, we can see over the last three hours that system is starting to continue to track its way northeast out of the upper Midwest. But we are still looking at some trace amounts of some faint light flurries or even some freezing drizzle mainly into the southern areas of southern Wisconsin. But for us here in Dane County, just going to be dealing with some light flurries moving on, but for the most part, we are pretty much out of the worst of it throughout the rest of tonight. Now, as we get into this evening, the good news is, is that our te current temperatures is 19 degrees. So the salts and the treatments on the roads, there actually are improvements, especially around the Beltline in Madison as of right now, as we're continuing throughout the rest of tonight. And our wind chills, however, are still pretty bitterly cold with seven degrees is what it feels like as you head outside. But temperatures around southern Wisconsin themselves, we're all on the colder side. But the good news is, is, once again, is that it's still warm enough that we are not going to be seeing that freezing ice just stick around for us. The treatments will work as well at 21 degrees in Janesville and for Platteville as well and for Lone Rock. But as we continue into tonight's, just know that the light flurries that we're going to be seeing are going to be tapering off pretty early. As we get into the rest of tonight's, however, temperatures will drop into the single digits and we are going to see those winds really factor in some below zero temperatures as we get into our Wednesday morning. But aside from that, this is what we're going to be seeing. Once the system rolls itself out, we are going to be looking for some open skies. We get into our Wednesday. However, once again, temperatures are going to be into the single digits. It's going to be brutal getting up next uh, tomorrow morning. As we continue throughout the day, however, temperatures will hold in steady around the lower 20s, and hopefully with that sun angle, we will start to see a bit more melting. But it's going to be quiet throughout Wednesday, but going into Thursday, we are looking for another round of seeing some snow. That snow will be coming in Thursday afternoon and Thursday nights, so that's why we have another alert date in the forecast for us. We're looking at accumulations of 2 to 4 inches to be expected. Nothing crazy, but still, we are looking for some light snow to start to develop, and this is what we're going to be seeing. Starting in early Tuesday afternoon, going to, or Thursday afternoon, excuse me, we're going to see that carry in throughout Thursday night, holding steady around southern Wisconsin. And as we get into our Friday morning, the early parts of Friday morning, it's going to be clearing itself out for us for a pretty decent day heading into Friday. Now, this is what we're looking at in terms of snow totals, mainly for all of southern Wisconsin. We're going to be holding into that two to four uh, inches range for snow accumulations for us. Still, nothing crazy, but we are still going to be seeing it have some impact. So once again, make sure that you have a game plan for Thursday as we're going to be seeing some more snow starting to roll its way in. And we haven't seen too much snow this winter, so this time it's going to be kind of nice to see it. It's going to be quiet Wednesday. Here are some of our takeaways as that system is going to be rolling into Thursday afternoon and Thursday night and carry into our Friday morning. Once again, just make sure that you have a plan in place in case of any kind of inconvenience. And here's what we're looking at throughout the next 10 days. After our alert day for Thursday, we're going to be seeing a warmer trend. It's going to be a slow one, but after this weekend, we're going to be in the 30s and then the 40s will stick around for us as well. That's right. We're going to be welcoming in March with some consistent 40s for us. It's going to be pretty nice for us as we get into our 10-day uh, forecast. That's one thing I'm happy about. Yeah, <laughs> melt some of this ice. Yeah, absolutely. I'm really looking forward to some 40s now. All right, Julian. Thank you. Thank you, Julian. Now on to an amazing story of survival at sea. A fisherman fell off his boat along the coast of Southern California, and it happened at night. The man swam for hours before something miraculous happened. Nicole Comstock has the story. Out at sea, these waters in the Santa Barbara Channel are much more than a sanctuary for this commercial fisherman. The boat in those islands aren't just my office, you know, they're like my world. But his world nearly came to a terrifying end in this dark water. Scott Thompson was on board his old blue boat called the Miss Grace, trying to clear his mind after the death of a close friend when he made one big mistake. And I've literally thought about it a hundred million times, like, what if I fell off my boat and the boat was in gear? And He went overboard at night into the ocean. And then I, like, looked up at the sky. I'm like, really? Like, really? This is how I'm going to die. Scott immediately realized he couldn't catch his boat, which was in gear and quickly drifting away. Being an experienced mariner, he knew he was using too much energy swimming upright as well. So he turned over on his back and thought about his next move. That's when he saw the bright lights from this oil platform way out in the water. 
he'd have to swim out to it between two and three miles away. He told himself it was his only chance at survival. And I just had to keep telling myself, yes, you can. Yes, you can. <laughs> you can do this. And then <clears throat> that's when it became not about me. It became about his family, his wife, their two little girls, and their older son. That's what motivated him to keep swimming. That was a lot of the drive, just thinking about, like, oh, my God, they're going to grow up without me. With his family in his mind, Scott eventually made it to that platform. But he developed hypothermia along the way from his exposure to the cold water. It was 52 degrees that night. Captain Carson Shevitz runs towboat U.S. Ventura, the maritime rescue company that eventually recovered Scott's boat. He says it's incredible that he survived the conditions, especially because he went overboard wearing shorts and a t-shirt. And it, it was even cold for me. And I was only in the water for 15 minutes. I could only imagine what he was going through that night. Scott says there was something else that gave him that little extra nudge he needed to get home to his family. And they always like pop their head out of the water and like, do you one of these? A harbor seal. He says one swam alongside him for a while and gave him a glimmer of hope. But that's when I was like, wow, I'm actually getting closer to this thing. Like, I'm going to pull this off. And, uh, and then he was gone. Scott found workers in that control room on the oil platform who called the Coast Guard in to finish the rescue. After a lot of reflection, he thinks it was more than just his experience in the ocean that helped him make it back to land. I just looked up at the sky and I was like, God, will you please just take care of my family? <laughs> and that's all I asked. And then the next thing I know, there I am at the oil derrick. And it's like, whoa. Wow, what an incredible what story. story. Yeah. The sea lion helped a lot. Isn't that something? I always wonder how an experience like that changes you. It changed him. You yeah. can just tell yes. it's seen in his eyes. Well, coming up next on Live Before Consumer Reports tells us how to cut down on our salt intake. And then coming up next hour at 5, an ice storm 100 years apart. This is what Mark and I were talking about at the top of the show. We'll tell you about the great ice storm of 1922 coming up tonight at 5. Dry eye symptoms driving you crazy? Inflammation might be to blame. Time for ink and burn. Over-the-counter eye drops typically work by lubricating your eyes and may provide temporary relief. Those will probably pass by me. Zydra works differently, targeting inflammation that can cause dry eye disease. Zydra, no! It can provide lasting relief. Zydra is the only FDA-approved non-steroid eye drop specifically for the signs and symptoms of dry eye disease. One drop in each eye twice a day. Don't use if you're allergic to Zydra. Common side effects include eye irritation, discomfort or blurred vision when applied to the eye, and unusual taste sensation. Don't touch container tip to your eye or any surface. After using Zydra, wait 15 minutes before reinserting contacts. Talk to an eye doctor about Zydra. I'd prefer you didn't. Zydra. Not today, dry eye. The Wisconsin Fishing Expo is back at the Align Energy Center Expo Hall in Madison, February 25th through the 27th. The Wisconsin Fishing Expo is back with new gear. The Wisconsin Fishing Expo is back with awesome seminars. The Wisconsin Fishing Expo is back with hard-to-find boats. The Wisconsin Fishing Expo is back with family activities. Go to WIFishingExpo.com for details. Sponsored by the Wisconsin Outdoor News, Don's Marine, Fox Sports 1070 The Game, Lucas Oil, and Explore Lacrosse. This is the purpose-built Ford F-150. It's a beast with brains. It, you know what? Skip this video. Go see one at the auto show. It's auto show time. The best time to buy a Ford F-150 with ways to power up this and that. Work smarter. Muscle for most anything. Plus, special auto show offers to help you bring one home today. Now get a 2021 F-150 with 0.9% financing for 60 months plus 1,000 auto show bonus cash. Having a 5G phone that's not on T-Mobile makes as much sense as playing ice hockey. Using pool noodles. Get out of the penalty box with 5G coverage like this. T-Mobile has more 5G bars in more places than anyone. T-Mobile, more 5G bars in more places. Another reason T-Mobile is the leader in 5G. Had enough? No. Arthritis. Here. Aspicrim arthritis. Huh. Full 
subscription strength. Reduces inflammation. Thank the gods. Don't thank them too soon. Kick pain in the Asper cream. Difficult driving conditions right now on local streets. Tonight at 5, what the Madison Streets Division is doing to help you get around safely. Even though freezing rain and sleet are ending, roads will remain slick overnight because of the cold temperatures. At 5, I'll also let you know about an alert day in the forecast for Thursday afternoon and night. And then at 6, the Assembly votes on a bill that would allow parents to have a bigger say in their child's education and not the school districts. We'll have a full report from the Capitol coming up at 6. Given the weather satellite a spin, it'll end up in a, looks like a rainy New York City. It's mild there, though. It's 53 degrees So it is. Today. It's liquid today. Yes, it They've is. They've had a lot of snow, so. That's a great shot. Yeah, it's a great city. Let's get back there again yes, soon. Yes, let's do that. Well, everyone knows too much sodium is not good for you. The problem is salt makes so many foods, obviously, taste better. But are there healthier ways to flavor our foods? Consumer Reports reveals which seasonings you can use instead of salt. Leah Lynchide tells us more. Christopher Maimon is a major foodie who shares the thousands of meals he's enjoyed on Facebook. During the week, he maintains a healthy diet. The body doesn't process food the way it did when you were younger, so uh, um, I'm just cutting back on sodium and fats. I'm basically lower salt, lower sodium in general. There are a couple of reasons why we crave salt. Salt or sodium chloride is a flavor enhancer that can boost the intensity of a dish. It can not only enhance sweetness, but also can mask tastes like bitterness. With so many varieties of salt on the market today, are they all the same when it comes to sodium levels? Well, not exactly. The density of the crystals makes a difference. For example, a quarter teaspoon of fine table salt has more sodium than a quarter teaspoon of coarse salt or flaked salt. So cut back on sodium by using the same amount of coarse salt when your recipe calls for fine. And what about the many alternatives that can add flavor with less sodium? We wanted to determine how the products worked as a salt swap to see if we could tell the difference and if they were better or worse than regular salt. CR's taste testing team tried six different products on plain foods like rice, scrambled eggs, and popcorn, so the difference would stand out. Here are the tastiest of the bunch. The taster said Morton Light Salt, 50% less sodium, tasted most like the real thing. In rice and eggs, it was hard to tell the difference, but it gave popcorn a slightly bitter taste. Because low-sodium salt contains added potassium, people with kidney disease should talk to their doctor before trying them. MSG, or monosodium glutamate, products add a savory flavor to foods. CR's tasters said accent seasoning tasted more brothy than salty and liked it on popcorn, but it gave a slightly metallic flavor to rice and eggs. Nutritional yeast can be used as a sodium swap in veggies, soups, and salads. Tasters tried Bob's Red Mill Large Flake Nutritional Yeast and found it had a cheesy umami flavor. On eggs, tasters preferred it to MSG. For News 3 Now, this is Leah Lynchide. Happy eating! And any way you shake it, when it comes to sodium, less is always more. Consumer reports suggest checking labels and going for low-sodium versions of the foods you like. Try the substitutes. We just had to do a little bit of the time to get off the salt. I used to work with a guy who salted his bacon. Oh, are you serious? Uh, sports <laughs> He's director. probably healthier than both of no, us. No, no. <laughs> Still to come at four, have we seen the worst of the pandemic? We'll find out why hospital beds are full, but not with COVID patients. UW Health's Dr. Jeff Potoff will join us. We'll talk to him when Live at Four continues. The Big Share, an online day of giving, is March 1st. Advance social and environmental justice by supporting the 70 nonprofit members of Community Shares of Wisconsin. Even a $5 donation can make change happen. Donate now through March 1st at thebigshare.org. This is big for heartburn sufferers. Zantac 360 Degrees has the number one doctor-recommended medicine approved to both prevent and relieve heartburn. It works in as little as 15 minutes and lasts up to 12 hours. Zantac 360. I'm on Express is the only place where you can count on same-day service. Thanks to our local labs, shop our huge selection and get quality glasses at a price you'll love. And see better today. Right glasses, right price, right now. 
Fixed. No charge. Ah, that's my son. He always takes care of his mama. Ooh, what's up with Granny's casserole? It's for after your Uncle Joe's funeral. My brother didn't have a life insurance policy. I hear there's a collection to help on Adele. Yeah, a funeral costs north of 9000 these days. That's a hefty bill for family to pay if there's no life insurance check to help. Wow, makes you think, doesn't it? Which reminds me, I've been meaning to tell you I got that $9.95 plan from Colonial Pen. I'm on a fixed income, so price is important. The life insurance on TV. Just $9.95 a month to help you pay my funeral expenses. What about your family, son? You've got a wife and kids and a grandson living with you now, too. Maybe I should get the $9.95 plan, too. Thing is, this has been a rough year for my business, Ma. Money's tight. Still, for $9.95 a month, I don't have a good excuse, do I? I'm Jonathan for Colonial Pen Life Insurance Company. If you're age 50 to 85, just $9.95 a month buys whole life insurance with guaranteed acceptance. You cannot be turned down for any health reason. There are no health questions. Guaranteed lifetime coverage. Your insurance can never be canceled. Just pay your premiums. Guaranteed lifetime rate lock. Your rate can never increase. It's locked in as soon as you're covered and stays the same for the rest of your life. With guarantees like these, it's no surprise the 995 plan is Colonial Penn's number one most popular whole life insurance. Now don't forget, wear your good suit tonight. And please call about the 995 plan today while it's on your mind, okay? Call now for free information. Call 1-800-505-7613 for free information and your free beneficiary planner. No obligation. 1-800-505-7613. That's 1-800-505-7613. Call now. The Big Share and Online Dave Giving is March 1st. Your support helps the 70 nonprofit members of Community Shares of Wisconsin advance social and environmental justice and make change happen. Donate now through March 1st at thebigshare.org. And a quick look at our traffic. Well, as of right now, we are still all green along the Beltline, but we can see some of the more residential areas, especially into the northwest between Mineral Points Road and O'Donnell Road and even for Fish Hatch. We are still looking at some slow spots starting to develop for us as we're continuing throughout the rest of our evening. However, on the interstates, we are all green for the most part as we are rolling in. Now, here's a quick look at what we're going to be expecting in terms of timing from getting to point A to point B. That's going to do it for our traffic. Let's go ahead and toss it back to you guys. All right, Julian, thank you. Clark County, Nevada, as issued his five millionth marriage license. He went to this happy couple in Vegas Sunday. Louis Patoa and Maria Ramirez. The couple, originally from California, made the trip to Las Vegas and had no idea of a special event going on. The couple was surprised with many gifts, including free wedding ring, $1,500 ticket at the Alliance Stadium, Allegiant Stadium, that is. The couple was also given the keys to the Vegas Strip. Oh, they that's great. Dressed up for the occasion. Very nice. Alcohol. <laughs> We're approaching the two-year mark of life with COVID next month. It's hard to believe, isn't it? Some healthcare officials are declaring that we're entering a new phase of the pandemic, moving towards an endemic approach. But it remains a source of major debate. UW Health's Chief Quality Officer, Dr. Jeff Potoff, is back with us for his weekly visit. Welcome back, Jeff. Hey, good to see you guys. So are we nearing an endemic phase of this? You know, I think things are pointing towards that right now. I think, you know, we can never discredit the ability of a variant to be discovered that somehow creates problems for us, but none right now on the radar. Cases are going down. Uh, it does look like if you're a betting man that uh, an endemic form of this disease, COVID-19, is probably where we're headed. Is it um, time to roll back some restrictions or do you have any concern that that might still be a little premature? You know, I think with cases going down, uh, the time to roll back some restrictions, whether it's masking or gatherings, things like that, uh, it's probably a fruitful territory to discuss. You know, whether that's today, uh, first of March, you know, second week of March, I think it's going to be hard to nail down exactly what that looks like. Uh, as far as concerns, I think in areas where there's high risk people, uh, particularly think around healthcare entities, uh, we got to be careful and keep those restrictions a little bit longer to protect those people. Uh, in schools, if you have really low vaccination rates between those like five year olds and 11 year olds, which we've seen in different areas, that might cause some pause. But um, other than that, uh, things are looking pretty good right now. That, well, that is good news. It is good news. There's, there's stories going around the country, and I think perhaps it's happening here. The ORs at hospitals are very busy, but not with COVID patients. What's going on? 
Yeah, this is a phenomenon we saw after um, our previous peaks, and, and we're seeing it now. So I think it's twofold. One, uh, you heard us tell us tell tell viewers that, that we had postponed a lot of different procedures, uh, whether they were non-emergent or even tier three and four procedures, and we want to get those back on the books. So that uh, is happening. It's keeping our OR schedules busy. Uh, I think likewise, there's a lot of people who were thinking during the Omicron surge, a hospital is the last place I want to be right now, uh, and they weren't getting healthcare needs met. They were postponing it themselves and now they're feeling more comfortable coming in, getting that care met. Uh, so for hospitals, uh, you know, who we're taking care of is changing, uh, but the idea that uh, we're somehow getting a reprieve or, or things are slow, uh, that's just not what's going on. Yeah, healthcare workers can't get a break, <laughs> even though the pandemic is ebbing a little bit. Yeah, that's yeah, I agree. I think, I mean, it's it's been hard for healthcare workers. I mean, we've endured a lot, uh, but uh, what an incredible team. Uh, they're, they're really some special people uh, who go into healthcare. Yeah. Your other hat is the emergency room doctor, and it's been a busy day with uh, this weather. Have you seen a lot of falls and breaks? So I fell on the ice two years ago, and when I went mm -hmm. to the emergency room, I broke my wrist, and they called it Christmas in March. <laughs> because so yeah, many, yeah, honestly, so Christmas. many people broke bones that day. It is really common. So with ice storms, your injury is exactly what we see. And we'll probably see a dozen more people like you today, Susan, who uh, fell on an outstretched hand and broke either the radius ulna uh, or sometimes both of them. That's a super common injury. We've been seeing that today. Uh, people who fall and hit their heads, uh, sometimes that's minor. Sometimes that's more severe, especially if you're on an anticoagulant like warfarin or Coumadin, uh, you want to get checked out. And then, of course, motor vehicle crashes from when those roads were a bit icier today. Uh, we see those folks in the emergency department, too, uh, try to get them fixed stop yeah. yeah any head injury you should probably have it looked at right you know some head injuries if it's just you know a mild bump and you've got a headache um, maybe not a big deal some will be more moderate so concussion like symptoms that you might want to call your primary care about uh, you know, one thing I do worry about is folks who are on anticoagulation medicines, folks who have atrial fibrillation or maybe they have a previous history of a blood clot. If you're on warfarin or Eliquist or, or some of these meds that thin your blood and you hit your head hard after slipping on the ice, you need to be seen. There's a chance that you could have some bleeding on the brain in that situation. Mm. All right. Well, I guess we do see finally the light near the end of the tunnel with COVID. It's looking good. Perhaps. It's looking good, Mark. <laughs> Hate to mm. jinx it. Yes, don't jinx <laughs> us. <laughs> Jeff, good to see you again. We'll see you next week. Week. Same. Talk to you Thanks, then. Thanks, Dr. Potoff. Good to see you. Well, the final check your forecast coming up. Living with metastatic breast cancer means being relentless because every day matters. And having more of them is possible with Fresenio, the only one of its kind proven to help you live significantly longer when taken with fulvestrant, regardless of menopause status. Fresenio plus fulvestrant is for HR positive, HER2 negative metastatic breast cancer that has progressed after hormone therapy. Diarrhea is common, may be severe, or cause dehydration or infection. At the first sign, call your doctor, start an antidiarrheal, and drink fluids. Before taking Fresenio, tell your doctor about any fever, chills, or other signs of infection. Fresenio may cause low white blood cell counts, which may cause serious infection that can lead to death. Life-threatening lung inflammation can occur. Tell your doctor about any new or worsening trouble breathing, cough, or chest pain. Serious liver problems can happen. Symptoms include fatigue, appetite loss, stomach pain, and bleeding or bruising. Blood clots that can lead to death have occurred. Tell your doctor if you have pain or swelling in your arms or legs, shortness of breath, chest pain, and rapid breathing or heart rate or if you are nursing pregnant or plan to be every day matters and i want more of them ask your doctor about every day for Zenio. what are you recommending for muscle pain based on clinical data i recommend salon pos agreed my patients like these patches because they work up to 12 hours even on moderate pain salon pos it's good medicine he, sent me to he should have used his power to serve wisconsin Instead, Ron Johnson served himself. An investigation found that Ron Johnson pushed through a special tax loophole that benefited his own family's business. After the loophole became law, Ron Johnson cashed out of the company for $5 million. Ron Johnson has doubled his wealth since taking office. Look up the facts and tell Ron Johnson to stop passing tax laws that benefit himself. The freezing rain and sleet are ending. At 5, I'll let you know how temperatures could affect the roads. Ice storms are no joke. And what the City of Madison Streets Division is doing to help keep you safe on the roads. That's coming up at 5. Imagine a doctor that comes to you. It's happening right here in Dane County. We can do health care better for less. Susan Simon shows you how it works and what patients think of these modern-day house calls. Thursday on News 3 Now at 6. 
And our final look at our weather, we have alert days in the forecast for Thursday afternoon into Thursday nights. And Chief Meteorologist Gary Canalti will give you the breakdown on what to expect coming up at 5. To be a thriver with metastatic breast cancer means asking for what we want and need. And we need more time. So we want Kiskali. Women are living longer than ever before with Kiskali. When taken with an aromatase inhibitor or fulvestrant in postmenopausal women with HR positive, HER2 negative metastatic breast cancer. Kiskali is a pill that's significantly more effective at delaying disease progression versus an aromatase inhibitor or fulvestrant alone. Kiskali can cause lung problems or an abnormal heartbeat, which can lead to death. It can cause serious skin reactions, liver problems, and low white blood cell counts that may result in severe infections. Tell your doctor right away if you have new or worsening symptoms, including breathing problems, cough, chest pain, a change in your heartbeat, dizziness, yellowing of the skin or eyes, dark urine, tiredness, loss of appetite, abdomen pain, bleeding, bruising, fever, chills, or other symptoms of an infection, a severe or worsening rash, are or plan to become pregnant or breastfeeding. Avoid grapefruit during treatment. Ask your doctor about living longer with Kiskali. Welcome to the lifestyles of the smart and savvy. Today, the Coopers are a cost-conscious couple. But back in the day, not so much. Now, saving is more their style, which is why they chose Consumer Cellular. They get the same premium coverage as the nation's leading carriers for half the cost. Imagine talk, text and data starting at $20 a month and award-winning customer service. Switch to Consumer Cellular today and get $25. I'm Gary Canolti, inviting News 3 Now viewers to join me on a fabulous New England and St. Lawrence Seaway cruise September 8th through the 18th. Experience the history and beauty of the Atlantic coast, Canadian maritime provinces, and the famous St. Lawrence Seaway aboard our delightful Holland America ship for a seven-night scenic cruise. Visit HolidayVacations.com, keyword WISC, to learn more about this tour or call 888-557-1020 for a free brochure. At Pick and Save, we believe fresh is all about standards. That's why we do up to a 27-point inspection on our produce. Like for oranges, we check for color and scarring and more. Keeping only the best of the best on our shelves. Because when it comes to fresh for everyone, we believe the juice is worth the squeeze. Pick and save. Fresh for everyone. In today's final touch, the Reggio Carnival is back <laughs> to its normal routine. If you can call any of this routine, the towering floats of the carnival are back. Last year, the pandemic forced the event to limit attendance, but with vaccinations rolled out and the coronavirus threat downgraded in Italy, the seaside promenade is packed once again for the spectacle. For the people of this town and the artists who create and operate the floats this year, feels like a rebirth. It usually takes a year to create one of these floats, which are going to keep me awake tonight. <laughs> exactly. The first carnival of Variego was held in 1873 and focused on Italian politics and domestic figures, but over the decades it has evolved to become more international in its outlook. Those are something. They will haunt you in your dreams. That's very well said. <laughs> yeah. yeah. All right, that's our time for now. Thanks for watching. We'll see you back here again tomorrow. Be careful out there. We'll... News Street Now at 5 starts right now.